Here we're gonna uh, work from the back position. Okay, two hooks in, both arms under, holding the cross. First attack, rear naked choke. We bring our chest above our partner's back. Right arm, strangle arm across the neck, making sure we have elbow and chin alignment. Now from here, my hand goes as far back behind his neck as possible, right behind his shoulder. My left hand will go over my right hand. My elbow will go right in front of his shoulder. I will open out my hands, slide my hand towards the back of his neck. Now, we're gonna fall to the side of the choking arm. Once we're here, keep both feet active as well. Stay close, and then we start the squeezing, and then the hyperextension of the body for the submission. Okay, back up, second submission. Uh, sliding collar choke. What we're going to do is we're going to take our strangle arm out. Our right hand goes over the shoulder. With our left hand, we flip the collar and we hold the collar with our three fingers with the collar flipped. Don't feed the collar down. Flip it, three finger grip. Now, second hand stays under. We flip the other collar outwards as well. We want to hold right below the chest, not too high, not too low, right in the middle. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to pull this one down. We're going to drive into the strangle arm side, but I want to land on my elbow because that is going to determine how much I'm able to choke him. And I use the back of my shoulder and his neck to continue the pressure. So basically, when we're here, as long as I land on my elbow and I start bringing my elbow behind my back, it's going to choke him. My shoulder is going to push him in the back of his neck. Okay, now the escape. We're going to go here. If I put my thumb inside the collar, his job is to control my sleeve and my tricep with the other hand at the gi. His goal here is to keep my elbow in front of his shoulder. If my elbow is able to go behind his shoulder, I can choke, boom. But if he's able to keep the elbow in front of his shoulder, it's easier for him to survive. Now he's gonna bend his right leg, straighten out his left. He has a connection to the floor, I do not. It should always be easier for him to drive me to the escaping side while he looks to the choking hand and then he pushes himself towards his left, getting his back, shoulders, and head on the mat. By putting my head and my choking arm on the same side, there's no choke. He's gonna start getting his hips pointed up to the ceiling, getting over this bottom hook, squeezing over my leg, getting this elbow down to the mat here. Once he gets the elbow down to the mat, he's out. Now, as I transition to a three-quarter mount position, he shots my hand, and then he goes into our textbook elbow escape. Shrimps get the shin shield, and they cut his guard. Open guard or closed guard, whichever he prefers. Alright guys, so now, uh, sort of a late defense, uh, when he goes for the sliding collar choke as he brings the strangle arm over, okay, he grabs my collar, and let's say I'm trying to work to the escaping side, he may even grab the other collar as well, but he pulls me to the choking side. Now, he lands on his tricep, he doesn't land on his elbow, and he makes the mistake of stretching the collar and disconnecting the chest from the back, stretching out like this, even more, more, more. So what I'm going to do is, look, both my hands are going to go on the, his uh, knee right here by his arm, and I'm going to pull my head out and kind of slip my head on, boom. And then once I'm out, everything is same. I get over that bottom leg, scoot, elbow down, he gets on top to a three-quarter mount position. I get my knee and elbow escape on one side, I shrink to the other, shin shield, and I recompose open guard or close guard, whichever I may choose. Okay?